Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Friends, Easter is not just a day. It's a whole season of time when we remember that Jesus' spirit lives on in each one of us. In the Bible, the early church was described in this way. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. Over the next few weeks, we will follow our ancestors' traditions. We will continue to create a temple of worship in our hearts, whether we can be physically together or not. By sharing in words and music and eating and breathing and moving together, even at a distance, we will stay connected. The earliest Christians worshiped in their homes before they had churches, and so will we until we can meet again in our sanctuary, because at the heart of the matter, we are connected through the spirit that makes us one in love. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We're going to begin by centering our hearts as one. Let's take a deep breath together. I invite you to place your hand over your heart. And let's lightly tap together in a heartbeat rhythm. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation, help us take this time to center on you, for you made us, you gave us life, and you continue to be with us every moment, every breath, every step. Hear this assurance from God. Be still, O oh heart, you're not alone. Your beat is shared with me. Come now and calm and center here. Your mind secure and free and let's take another deep breath and let our shoulders and the tension we feel in our bodies release with that breath and with every breath letting go with the breath let's take another breath Let's pick up our heart stones, the worry stones, and let our touch on the surface of the stone remind us that God's touch is within us, between us and around us, as close and real as this object is in our hands right now, is how close love is to us always. Let us imagine letting go of our worries for now into God's heart of love. And we offer a prayer song of letting go. Into your care we offer now our worries and our fears. We turn to you and know you're near, your light, our love, and life. And let's light our candles.
and set our heart stones, worry stones, near the candle. Jesus says that when we remember him and know him in our hearts, we know God as we sit around this meal in our homes. Because we ask Jesus to be with us, we sit in the house and heart of God and spirit with all of us as well. Will you please join our family in this repeat after me prayer? God our host, God our host, we gather together in your name, God our host, invited by Jesus, God our host, bound with your spirit, God our host, in union with each other, God our host, feed our bodies and spirits, God our host, with your comforting presence, God our host, so that we so we so that we might be your comfort to others. God our host. Bless this food. God our host. And break open our hearts. God our host. Bless this drink. God our host. And pour out your love. God our host. Amen. 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 And now I invite you to pick up a plate of food or a cup on the table and say the one word that is at the heart in every blessing we do at our table. Grateful. 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 Let us begin to break bread while we break open the word in our scriptures. Since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, this is the reason I don't stop giving thanks to God for you when I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Sovereign of Glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that makes God known to you. I pray that the eyes of your heart will have enough light to see what is the hope of God's call what is the richness of God's glorious inheritance among believers, and what is the overwhelming greatness of God's power that is working among us believers. This power is conferred by the energy of God's powerful strength. God's power was at work in Christ when God raised him from the dead and set him at God's right side in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority and power and angelic power, any power that might be named not only now but in the future. God put everything under Christ's feet and made him head of everything in the church, which is his body. His body, the church, 
is the fullness of Christ, who fills everything in every way. Ephesians 1, verses 15 to 23. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our children's moment today is brought to us by Chloe, playing a piece called Lunar Eclipse. Thank you, Chloe. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law, from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Look, I am sending to you what my God promised, but you are to stay in the city until you have been furnished with heavenly power. He led them out as far as Bethany, where he lifted his hands and blessed them. As he blessed them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. They worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem overwhelmed with joy. They were continuously in the temple praising God. Luke 24, verses 44 to 53. This is the gospel of the Savior. Thanks be to God. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. Praise Him, He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord, forever His truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in His holy Exalted on high. 
He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise His name. Once again, to be the body of Christ is to see the world through the eyes of Jesus, to see the world through the eyes of love. As Christ's body here on earth, we try to create the same conditions of love that he did while he lived with us here on earth. We hope that the eyes of our hearts can continually be opened as the eyes and hearts and minds of the disciples were on that day of Jesus' ascension so that we can be the best representation of the love of Christ here on earth. Perhaps we can see ascension with Christ as an elevation or heightening of our gratitude and our commitment to do good in the world. What have you experienced or seen that has been positive or brought you hope? Is it bird song that has re-entered your living space as human activity has slowed? Is it taking time to relax and recognize the beauty all around us? And is this spring more beautiful than ever? Or are we just noticing the beauty much more? Does your hope lie in a feeling that life is cyclical and this arc of the cycle will give way to something new, something better. Do you delight in seeing loved ones more regularly, even if only on Zoom? Have you enjoyed seeing Korean baseball, even in the middle of our West Coast night? Of course, we've had a lot of opportunity to study our bedroom ceilings in the middle of the night too. We've missed loved ones, grieved, lost experiences, especially for our young people who are missing graduations and birthday celebrations, postponing weddings and other milestone events. It felt to me that last week was a time for many of us when we hit a metaphorical wall. Is the unknown sometimes even scarier than the actual problems we face? I push myself to stay positive. I know many of you are doing this too. I'm not sure we're looking for a silver lining, but we are wondering and even seeking what good, what possible good may come out of this COVID experience. I remind myself of those who are truly suffering, food and housing insecurity business failures, where years of effort seems to have been lost in 30, 60, or 90 days, parents caught between their jobs and caring for and educating their children, and those little ones who are falling behind because 
They so need to be in the classroom with their teacher. One of my educator friends wondered aloud this week if some of our children will ever learn how to read. We wonder who's going to figure this out, who will solve the many crises related to the coronavirus outbreak, who will take this moment and make something better from the ashes of what was the American economy, or the Chinese, or Indian, or British, or Brazilian, or any other economy. How can we maintain the positive changes that we've seen for our environment as fewer cars crowd our high highways and sicken our air? Can we keep spending time with our loved ones, growing food, baking bread, putting together puzzles and playing games? The hard thing, and maybe the hopeful thing, is that we are the people we've been waiting for. Just as Jesus did not ride into Jerusalem on a white steed that spring day before the Passover, our Savior will not come with pomp and power. Our Savior will be worried and humble, a bit overwhelmed, but determined to participate in the effort to create a better world from the mess we're in. Our Savior will not look back, wondering how we can return to a world before COVID, when the stock market soared, but regular folks, working people, still had to choose between paying rent and buying food or needed medication. That normal was never normal. It was distorted and unstable and destined to fail, though maybe not before a tremendous amount of unnecessary suffering. You are the one we've been waiting for. And the same is true of me. I don't feel like a savior, but we'll get to that a little later. The symbolism of Jesus leaving this earthly plane is that we are to carry on what he started. We are to follow his ways of compassion, forgiveness, inclusion, and speaking truth to the powerful. In the passage we heard from Luke 24, the final chapter, Jesus opens the minds of the disciples to what the scriptures say about him and his mission. Jesus tells them to stay put, to wait, to wait for what Abba God has promised. They will be clothed with power from on high. We understand this to point to the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, and it was foreshadowed by Jesus' statement to the disciples as he breathed on them on Easter evening in a shuttered upstairs room. Going out to Bethany, an easy walk from Jerusalem, he blesses his disciples and is carried up to heaven. The concluding lines of Luke's Gospels are these. The disciples worshiped the risen Christ and returned to Jerusalem full of joy. They were found in the temple constantly speaking the praises of God. Jesus has been killed by the Roman authorities in collusion with the temple officials. He has risen again declaring that God's love in Christ is stronger even than death. He has comforted and taught his followers and opened their minds in a new way. Why are the disciples filled with joy that Jesus is now leaving them for good. The wisdom from our Bible study group is that the incarnate Jesus, bound by time and space in his earthly body, must leave this earthly plane in order to allow the cosmic Christ to be present with all creation in all time and all space. And so when we meet together, even by Zoom or recorded services, I would venture Christ is present with us. Christ is present when we share the sacrament of Holy Communion. We see the Spirit of God in Christ, in one another, 
in all humankind and truly in all creation. I'm so often struck by the wisdom and creative ideas that come out of faithful people meeting together. I like to hang out at home in my pajamas as much as the next person, but I know that when we gather together, we're greater than the sum of our individual contributions. I believe that is the spirit with us in our interchanges, communicating in us and through us and between us. Holy Wisdom, Sophia, the Ruach of God, these are names for this ineffable mystery that encourages, emboldens, strengthens, and edifies us to do the will of God, to be Christ for our world. We are called to carry on the mission of Christ in our world. In these difficult days, we are called to be co-creators with God as together we envision a new and hopefully better world. We apply our God-given skill, our education, wisdom, compassion, and more to the task. We feel inadequate, and of course we are. We are inadequate to the task in normal times, whatever those are, and we are surely inadequate to what is needed now to build a new order that includes all in the abundance of God's creation. We know that God's creation offers abundance for all. Distribution is a human problem, but it will take a superhuman effort to solve this life-threatening challenge. What we need is an openness to the Spirit of Christ that will take all of our human attributes and resources and make more of them than we are able to. Our Bible study members asked, how do we do that? How do we tap into the Spirit to make us able to do and be more than we are on our own? Isn't that a superhuman effort in itself? Maybe so. But Reverend Dwight Vogel, wise one, generous teacher and learner too, shared a wonderful metaphor that helped us all to understand our role of openness to God's spirit a little better. This wisdom comes from his work with his beloved Reverend Linda Vogel in their 1999 book, Sacramental Living, Falling Stars and Coloring Outside the Lines. Falling stars, Dwight shared, are a gift. They just happen. We can't control them or make them happen. Not because we wish it. Even our prayers don't necessarily make falling stars dazzle through the night sky. But we have to pay attention. We have to take time. We have to lie on a blanket on a moonless night we have to watch and wait. A little like the disciples to whom Jesus said, stay here until you have been clothed with power from on high. We might watch and wait and not see a falling star. Then again, our waiting and our patience might pay off in a sighting of that cosmic miracle. We have to be ready. We have to watch and pay attention. We have to wait on God's time, and sometimes we see. And so with the Spirit, we need to give our time to the Spirit of God. We need to listen and wait and watch to hear and see and feel the Spirit of God and learn what it is calling us to do I'm terrible at this, but I think it's like any other practice. It takes practice. And maybe this great pause given to us by this terrible illness is our opportunity to make the time and space to listen and to understand. Maybe this great pause is our time to pay attention, not to the busyness of our commerce and our activity, 
but to pay attention to that which is beyond our narrow minds. Maybe we can hear the Spirit calling us to follow Christ and sharing the love and grace and compassion and wisdom of God. Let's encourage each other to take advantage of this pause in our activity to hear what God is saying about our families and our neighbors, our communities, our gardens. Let's hear what God is saying about our relationship to the earth that sustains us and the relationships that make us whole. Let's listen for God's guidance on building a society based on equity and care for all, a society that seeks to share instead of hoard the abundance of God's creation that's been entrusted to our stewardship. Hear this prayer for Ascension Day from Daniel T. Benedict, teacher, theologian, man of God, and former abbot of the Order of St. Luke. O God of earth and sky, as Jesus came among us in Bethlehem to raise us up to heaven, so today we recall his departing from us at Jerusalem to be in all places. Though he is hidden from our sight, enable us to abide in him by the power of your Holy Spirit until his mercy and grace fill your whole creation. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. What will you practice to pay closer attention? Let's try it together as we seek a better, safer, more just and compassionate world. May we hear the wind of God blowing through our troubled land, leading us to a new way, a way of love in Christ. May it be so. Amen. Alleluia. To be the body of Christ as the church is to see the world through the eyes of Jesus, to see through the eyes of love. We hope that the eyes of our hearts can be continually opened, just as the disciples were that day of ascension. We hope this so that we can be the best representation of Christ's love here on earth. In our peace and pondering time today, as we share with one another across the virtual connection, how we find strength, love, hope, and peace in these times, what does it mean to look through the eyes of our hearts? When our level of love goes up, our level of appreciation and gratitude goes up as well. So today, I invite you to look around you. What do you see in front of you that may be something or someone or a photo of someone that you see every day, yet could see with new eyes of gratitude? Let your gaze rest on at least three things or people or images of people in this moment.
What did you just see when you looked around? And did looking at it with eyes of a grateful heart offer you a new perspective? What else are you grateful for at this moment? What do we want to elevate in our commitment to make the world a better place? The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace. Friends, as we come together in prayer, in this very challenging time, in this very challenging season, we come together in faith, we come together in hope, we come together willing to call on that Holy Spirit of God that Jesus promised the disciples and shares with each one of us. And so we dare to lift our prayers to God via the Spirit, in the name of Jesus. We pray in these times. And so as I share our prayers this day, I invite you to know that it is fine to be sad about the people you can't be with. I invite you to take a moment Open your heart to that awareness and name to yourself and name to our divine creator, the people you miss, the people you wish were right beside you. Whether they are in this world and at a distance or whether they are in the arms of God's love in an internal home, I invite you to name them now. And as they are present in our hearts, it's as if they are here alongside us. I just felt the room get a little larger. Some of you have shared with me how much you miss this vista. So I recorded all of my pieces for today's worship with the window as the backdrop, with God's creation as the backdrop. And so let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, you are our creator. You are the creator of each and every one of us, and you created each and every one of us in your image. You called Jesus your beloved son, and you call each and every one of us your beloved children. And so with the confidence of the children of God, we pray. Oh God, our hearts are heavy. Our souls are weary. Information changes day by day. Headlines change day by day. One of the constants in this time is the number of people in the front lines who are working so hard 
to care for others. We lift each one of them in our prayers. We know some of their names, and you know all of their names. May anyone who is caring for someone who is sick with this virus or ill in any way, may they feel the arms of you, the spirit of you, comforting them, energizing them. And we pray for those who are ill. We pray for those who are ill with this virus and those who are ill with other challenges. Even before this pandemic, there were those among us who live with chronic health challenges. And this raises fear and concern and worry in this time. For all who are suffering, we pray your Holy Spirit comfort. And for all who are worried, we pray that peace that surpasses understanding. Oh God, we pray too, aware of how many people have lost their lives. Sometimes they are people we know. We know by name, we know by relationship, and thousands and thousands of others are people we do not know. And we can only imagine the sorrow, the grief, the loss their families feel. And so we mourn and we pray with sighs too deep for words, knowing that your Holy Spirit prays with us. We pray for those from whom we are separated, whether it is by this social distance or whether it is a separation that existed before now. For those who are estranged for loved ones, we offer our prayers. For those who are moved to make amends, we offer our prayers. We also know, O oh God, that there are moments of joy, moments of happiness, in our lives. There are moments of beauty as we walk where we're able. And so we pray that you help us not squander that joy, not squander that beauty, not squander that happiness. Help us. Help us find the ways, find the people, find the, the books, find the YouTube videos, find the pathways that delight us. And may your Holy Spirit help us know that delight, that joy, even in the hardest times, is holy. And so, O oh God, we pause now and each one of us, wherever we are, we lift up our most fervent prayer. And so, Holy One, for the prayers that were raised and the prayers of our hearts known only between you and the prayer. We say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember this day how Jesus asked his disciples to share his love, his message of peace his life-giving, resurrected, ascended message of hope to all people. That is the heart of the matter. May we be your love in this world. We pray this in the name of the risen and ascended Christ. Amen. Will you please join me? in the Lord's Prayer.
creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Dear friends, I want to let you know of some recent prayer requests that we have received. Our longtime friend, Jerry Burtis, has died. Jane requests our prayers, and as she grieves Jerry's death, she expresses deep gratitude and joy at their wonderful marriage and life together. In addition, Frank Cookingham has suffered a heart attack. He is now recovering at home, and we pray that he makes a full recovery. In addition, Jim Dwyer is undergoing radiation treatments for cancer. So we hold Jim close in our prayers as well. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for these three wonderful disciples of yours. We offer our thanks for the life of Jerry Burtis and lift him up to your eternal care. As you receive him into your loving arms, also hold his family close and bring comfort and consolation as they mourn his death and celebrate his wonderful life. We lift up Frank Cookingham and Jim Dwyer, asking for your healing grace in their lives that both may return to full health and their active lives. We give you thanks for each one of these dear ones, and we are so grateful for your loving care for all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now with hearts filled with gratitude, we offer what we can of ourselves to those around us, to those we can call or text, to those we can email or write. We offer ourselves. We offer ourselves as an extension of God's love in this world. And so that is our first offering today. How can you, how can we continue to offer ourselves in loving ways in the world? We continue to be grateful for those of you who made a pledge this year and are continuing to give toward that pledge that goes to our missions and ministry budget. The reports are amazing. We are within budget. We're within budget in giving and we are under budget in spending. And so we are so very grateful for all that you can give. to praise God, to praise God with our hallelujahs, to praise God with our bodies, to praise God with our enthusiasm, to praise God with our hope, even to praise God in our despair. This time every week we encourage one another to move, and so may we throw ourselves, body, mind, spirit, and soul, into whatever we are called to do, in this week, in this time. Will you please join me in this repeat after me prayer? We know that Jesus is present among us, even in this very home. We will not let fear be louder than love, but with glad hearts and rejoicing souls, we will sing God's praise, for we 
are an Easter people. Now let's move. take all the energy that we have received and think of ways that we can send it out in goodwill into our world. Recently, you have participated with the Committee on Hunger and Homelessness to offer 106 bags of food for those who are unhoused in our nearby community. You've given 134 jars of peanut butter and a giant bag of avocados these are ways in which we can help our neighbors who are so important to us. Another way that we are going to take this energy and goodwill that we have received from God and send it out is through our Stephen Ministry team. Usually the Stephen Ministry uh, members meet in, uh, for a long term basis with those who are struggling. However, now they would like to offer additional time to help you if you are feeling isolated, afraid, anxious, worried about getting sick, worried about a loved one. If there's something that's challenging you in these days, our Stephen ministers want to be of help and comfort as they walk alongside you and provide a wonderful, active, listening ear for what is happening in your life. Please contact our church office. We will make sure to connect you with one of our Stephen ministers so that you might receive the love and care that God provides through this wonderful ministry. And now, dear friends, as we close this time together, remember that God is always with you. The cosmic Christ is present in all times and all places, no matter what you face, the hardships and challenges that come your way, God is present with you. 
God encourages you to walk in joy and peace and love, acknowledging the feelings of fear and anxiety that you still hold. But know that you are held in the heart and the love of God. Take heart, dear friends. This is the heart of the matter. Thanks be to God. Amen. They will edit it, I'm sure. Yes, I know. I'm just, uh, okay. All right.